31, welcome to example six. So I want to start to talk to you about logistic growth. And logistic growth, here's the model for it. All right, and it looks funky, and it is, but I want you to take note there is an exponential aspect to it, but it's, it's more than just an exponential model. And so we've been talking about exponential growth and exponential decay, and those are awesome. Exponential growth is great, but exponential growth in the real world can't continue forever. Like if I said that the world population was gonna continue to double every, I don't know, let's say 100 years, right? If there were like a, a billion people, um, let's say in the 50s, and then it doubled, right? And then it doubled again, and again, and again, and again. Like this, this begins to break down. We're not eventually gonna have 128 billion people on the planet. So logistic growth, what that does is it puts a cap on the exponential growth. Because again, exponential growth is great for short term, but in long term, it just doesn't apply. There's always some carrying capacity or some limiting value. I'll give you another for instance. Um, when, when it's flu season and diseases start to spread, right? So initially, diseases will spread very rapidly. So if you think of the y-axis as the number of people infected, initially so many people are getting infected, right? You keep hearing like, oh my gosh, outbreak, outbreak, outbreak. But eventually, as more and more people get infected, there's fewer that remain to be infected. So that growth of that virus, it gets capped somewhere, all right? So you can't have people getting, you know, more and more people getting sick forever and ever and ever because you run out of people, right? There's some kind of carrying capacity, some kind of limiting value. Um, back in high school, at least my high school, rumors spread all the time. And if it was a rumor, like from zero to first period, so many people had heard about it. And then from second to third period, so many people, right? It kept growing the number of people. But then by lunch, everybody had kind of heard it. So there weren't more people. There weren't newer people hearing it because eventually everyone at the high school heard it. So there couldn't be an increase in the number of people that were hearing the rumor. So again, while exponential models are great initially, in the real world, they cap off somewhere. They have some kind of carrying capacity. And that's where the logistic growth model comes in. We're just, we're capping that exponential growth. And it's got this formula. So you can see it's got a bunch of new, of new constants. We've got C, A and negative B, or A and B are familiar, but we've got this C in here. So C in ratio to one plus A is your initial value. C is called the carrying capacity, or it's some kind of limiting value, all right? B is a constant determined by the rate of growth. The logistic growth model is approximately exponential at first, but it has a reduced rate of growth as the output approach approaches the model's upper bound, which we call the carrying capacity. Right? Again, so initially you are growing super, super fast like an exponential growth, but we do cap out at our carrying capacity. All right, so we're gonna do a version of this problem where we're taking a look at the flu spreading. All right, so let's scooch this up and we'll remember that equation. I'll rewrite it once I get the problem in view. All right, so let's see what we can pick apart here. It says an influenza epidemic spreads through a population rapidly at a rate that depends on two factors. The more people who have the flu, the more rapidly it spreads. And also the more uninfected people there are, the more rapidly it spreads, right? So if more people have the flu, more people are gonna get the flu. But if you have a lot of uninfected people, then they're also gonna get the flu pretty fast, right? But the the, the smaller this number gets, like when uninfected go down, then that, that virus is gonna stop spreading. All right, so it says at time t equaling zero, there is one person in a community of a thousand people who has the flu. Researchers find that for this particular strain of the flu, the logistic growth constant is B equaling 0 0.6030. Estimate the number of the people, excuse me, estimate the number of people in this community who will have the flu, excuse me, who will have had this flu after 15 days. All right, so we're saying at time t equaling zero, one person's got it. There's a thousand people in this community and there's our growth rate, right? Our, our rate of growth. So let's take a look at this logistic model. So I'm gonna do f of x, it's gonna be equal to c over one plus a e to the negative bx. All right, so let's pick these apart. I hear this is an ordered pair. At time t equaling zero, one person had the flu. So let me go ahead and write that. I've got an ordered pair. I wanna make a list of what I know. 
I hear that there's a thousand people in the community, meaning that if the spread were to, uh, excuse, me, excuse me, as this flu is spreading, the most folks that can get infected are 1,000, right? My capacity for this flu virus, if we're gonna assume that there's not, there's no way that these thousand people are going and potentially infecting other folks, the carrying capacity of this flu epidemic is a thousand folks. And then I'm also given that B is equal to 0 0.6030. So with that, let's see what we can plug in to our model and what we still need to do. So I am gonna plug C and B in directly. I wasn't given A, which is fine, I'll figure it out. All right, we've got a thousand on our numerator. I've got one plus a to the e to the negative point six zero three zero x. All right, and I don't have my a value, but I was given an ordered pair here. So if I plug zero in for x and one in for y, or I guess one in for f of x, I can solve for a. So let's see what we get. We got one here equaling 1,000 over 1 plus a e to the negative 0 0.6030 times 0. Okay, so working through that, negative 0 0.6030 times 0 is 0, and e to the 0 is 1, so this denominator just becomes 1 plus a. So at this point I have 1 is equal to 1,000 over 1 plus a. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cross multiply this. So that's gonna tell me that one times a plus one, or one, plus, one times one plus a, so I have a plus one essentially here. Now this would be a denominator of one, so that would be equal to 1,000. All right, so from here, I get a is equal to 999. All right, fantastic. So at this point, I know my logistic model. All right, I'm gonna scooch this up, just so we have plenty of room to see all of this. All right, so at this point, I know my logistic model is f of x will be equal to, we'll have 1,000 up here, and then we'll have 1 plus 999 e to the negative 0 0.6030x. All right, and I, I guess I shouldn't technically even put my therefore. All I've done is found my model. But now that I've found my model, it says estimate the number of people in this community who will have the flu after 15 days. Okay. Well, if we're talking 15 days, is 15 days an x value or a y value? Well, 15 days is a time value, so it's our x value, because this is representing the number of sick people. So what I'm really being asked to find is f of 15. So we've got 1,000 over 1 plus 999 e to the negative 0 0.6030 times 15. All right, I'm gonna be real careful when I plug this into my calculator. I'm actually just gonna do my denominator first to kind of play it safe. So we've got one plus 999 times E to the negative 0 0.6030 times 15. That's my denominator, so I'm gonna do 1,000 divided by that number, and I get about 895 people, All right? So this is, 894.57, which is around 895 people. Yeah. All right, so that means that if, if this flu is spreading this at, at this rate, that out of those 1,000 people, about 895 will have gotten the flu 15 days after that outbreak. All right, now I do wanna show you how could you figure this out on your calculator, because it's always great to have technology around to check your answer. So let me clear out what I have. The trickiest part is gonna be getting that exponential model properly put into your y equals and then adjusting your window. So let's try this. I have a thousand on my numerator. I'm gonna divide that by a binomial in the denominator. So I need to put parentheses around it to protect that binomial. So we'll do one plus 999 and then I've got e to the negative 0 0.6030 times x. I want to close the parentheses of my exponent and close the parentheses on that binomial in the denominator. All right, and now if I hit zoom six, and I'm going to hit zoom six because I had adjusted my window, for example, five, and I need to readjust it here. Now, initially, this just looks exponential to me, 
but I know what we plugged in was um, logistic. So let's think about our window. Our X is going from negative 10 to 10. I'm, I'm gonna start this at negative one and they were talking about being 15 days out. So I need to at least make this 15. I'm gonna just go to 30. And instead of making a tick mark every one unit, I'll just say, hey, make them every five. Now, if we think about the number of people that are in this community, we had a carrying capacity of 1,000, so I need this to be at least 1,000, but I wanna see a little bit higher than that, so I'll go something like 1,500, um, and then I'll go ahead and I'll scale this by 100, because I don't want 1,500 tick marks on the y-axis, so I'll just take a couple. Um, you can leave this at negative 10. You see here I wrote it at zero. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. Just to be different, I'll, I'll leave this at negative 10. Whenever you adjust your graph, excuse me, yeah, adjust your window, just hit graph. Don't hit zoom nine or zoom six. All right, there we go. Okay, I can see it. Now, if I was, I went by five units here. So this is five, 10, 15. I basically want the Y value right around here. And the Y value, I can see it's kind of high up, right? So let's take a look. I would hit second and then trace, option one. I'm gonna plug in 15 and when I hit enter, I get 894.56. Actually, that's super close to what I had. I think that's pretty darn um, on the money. So there you go. You've got doing it sort of by hand. I mean, I know we still used our calculator here. We also have using our graphing calculator screen. All right, so that brings us to the end of section 6.7, which is a big one. All right, so in section 6.7, we're looking at exponential growth or decay, specifically using base E. All right, so all of these problems used base E for your exponential model, and you're not always limited to base E. It's just the reason that we like base E is that we have a natural log button on our calculator and it makes things cancel out just slightly faster. But if you remember, like back in example three, Right? In example three, when we had the zombie outbreak, we did it with base E and with a base B. When I say base B, that's a number, I, I'm just referring to another, a, a number other than E, right? Our base here was 1.17, or here our base was E, which again, it's about 2.71828. And I showed you how you could take your, your base E and you could write it as a base B. All right, and we also did it in the other direction where I, I said, well, hey, here was a base E, how do we get it to be base B using what our calculator regression output was? So we can go both directions, but again, just find one that works for you. They're both gonna work. All right, so with that, we're gonna move into section 6.8 and we're really gonna focus hard on using regression models to get all of these um, exponential growth, logarithmic growth and logistic growth models. All right, so we're gonna work heavy on our stat side in the next section. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye.